Assembly members Mark Walzik and Ken Blankenbush held a press conference to discuss a criminal justice reform that was enacted on January 1st. Assemblyman Walzik, as well as members of local law enforcement, district attorney's offices, and victims' assistance entities voiced their displeasure with this new bill, which they say gives more rights and freedoms to dangerous criminals instead of protecting victims in our community. The New York State Justice Task Force, uh, just two years ago, in 2018, uh, started to really study bail reform and discovery laws uh, to make it more fair for those in poverty in New York State. They issued a report in February of last year, the same time the governor was jamming this into the budget, and they gave him a rubric, rubric that was thorough, thought out, and it was there. Uh, what it wasn't is presented to the legislature at the same time. It wasn't considered by the governor. It was, was not considered by the Speaker of the Assembly or the Leader of the Senate at the time. Um, and it needs to. And that's why we're asking for a full repeal of what I refer to as catch and release. Many call it bail reform of what I call witness elimination. And that's what they're calling the discovery reforms at the time. And overall, I've referred to this as the Victim Abuse Act of 2019, and it needs to be fully repealed because what we've done is we've given more rights to the criminals than the victims in our criminal justice system, and that is upside down and needs to change in New York. St. Lawrence County District Attorney Gary Pasqua was in attendance and spoke of specific incidents in our community where dangerous felons were turned out onto the streets because a judge couldn't hold them due to this new legislation. Um, you know, I don't think there's a district attorney across the state who would argue uh, that reforms uh, in our laws are necessary uh, and reasonable reforms uh, would be something that are welcomed uh, by district attorneys across the state, by the district attorneys association. However, what was done, uh, in our view, uh, is swung so far to one side uh, that it's not reasonable. You know, for example, yesterday, uh, two individuals Prior convicted felons were finally apprehended on arrest warrants uh, for committing a burglary in the second degree, breaking into someone's home in my county. They had uh, been missing for four months, had, had not shown up for court appearances. Finally, when they did come in, they were brought in front of a county court judge and they were released uh, on their own recognizance because the judge had no discretion to hold that individual or put bail on them. That is the kind of thing that we're dealing with on a daily basis. Lewis County Sheriff Michael Carpinelli and St. Lawrence County Sheriff Brooks Bigwarf were both outspoken about their displeasure with this new bill. This is a dangerous law, but it's a dangerous person that gave us that law. Um, the governor has no concern for the people of upstate New York. Some of your downstate representatives, they don't care about the people of upstate New York either. They put this law together for one purpose, not because that there's some poor people who can't afford the bail. They did it because they want for political reasons to get the votes they need to get back into their offices. Well, I'm going to tell you today that uh, we're going to change that in the next couple of years. We're going to vote you out. We're going to recruit people, too, to vote you out. We're going to recruit candidates to get you out. We're not happy with it. We're not going to do it anymore. We've had enough. And the people of the state will speak loudly in the next election. I hope the rest of the people in the state uh, hear us loudly, uh, support us, support their fellow citizens to see if this is wrong, and support their fellow uh, law enforcement people and, their, uh, and the politicians in upstate New York because we've had enough. These two reforms are game changers. The only problem with that statement is this isn't a game. This is real life, real victims, real suspects with real crimes. And some of those times those crimes are violent crimes. That's real life. And that's what this, these two reforms don't address. Real life, real people. And that's where things get dangerous. And that's where these two bills need to be repealed immediately. Not in the summer session, not in the su summer session, fall, whatever. Now is when it needs to be done before somebody gets hurt. There's victims out there that are relying on law enforcement, legislators to protect them. These two bills do not. Members of our local victims assistance programs also spoke about their worries and say there are real possibilities for seeing more victims in their facilities. This isn't a political game. It is about our communities, it's about society, and it's about safety. So I'm here on behalf of the victims because we rely on law enforcement. We work with law enforcement, we work with all the, all the game players in the judicial system, and um, this is very dangerous for victims. And um, we do need to look into doing some changes because ultimately uh, the victims that suffer, and they look to all of us to help protect them, and our hands are tied at this point. So um, 
we really need to step up and change some the ways we're uh, looking at uh, criminals at this point. And I will speak on behalf of victims that I'm your voice, and um, we are here for you as best we can. We often talk about victim safety and offender accountability. When you take offender accountability out of that, the risks for our victims are going to go up. Um, so their safety um, is, is paramount now, and we work very closely with our district attorney, the sheriffs, um, and almost weekly, and trying to do what we can to keep them safe. You know, we, we've talked about that victims may be looking for safe housing more so now than ever. Um, we're only at a nine bed safe dwelling, but you know, don't let that stop any victim from wanting to, to, to get to a safe place, to come to Renewal House, a victim assistance center, Lewis County Opportunities, um, to reach out for help. We'll be there. We'll do what we can to, to keep you safe. This is what's lacking when you jam public policy into the budget process in Albany. Uh, you don't get the input from folks like this who live it every day, who are looking out for our public safety every day. And that's where you come up with bad policy. Uh, we fought it last year in a bipartisan way. I think something that gets missed sometimes when this is reported, that both Republicans and Democrats voted against this bill. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough uh, to stop this measure. Uh, but right now we're building a coalition in a bipartisan way to hopefully get a full reversal. You can find this story and more at informny.com. With ABC 50 Now, I'm Josh Bond.